Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been so long since I last filmed for this channel, but I have missed it so much and I am happy to be back. So today I am going to be doing a full face of Wet n Wild makeup. Now Wet n Wild is a cruelty free drugstore brand and they are super affordable, especially compared to a lot of the other drugstore brands. Nowadays I feel like prices are getting pretty steep, but I love their products and there's barely anything that I've tried from them that I genuinely don't like. So in today's video, I am going to talk about all different types of products and how they wear as well because everything in here I have tried and tested. I wanted to be able to tell you guys how they perform over a longer period of time. So if you are interested to hear my thoughts, then just keep on watching. I decided to put my bunny ear headband on in honor of using a brand that is cruelty free. This I actually got from Bath and Body Works, which is such a random place to find a headband like this but they had it and I had to have it. So before I started filming I did use the Perfect Pout Lip Scrub. This one is in the watermelon scent and if you don't like artificial smells you probably won't be into this because it's kind of like that candy watermelon smell but I do enjoy it and I just take a little bit out of there, rub it on my lips with warm water. The nice thing is that it doesn't leave your lips feeling too dry and that's because it has Takuma seed butter and Murumuru seed butter. So starting out with primer, of course, I have the Photo Focus Dewy Face Primer and I believe they have a matte version of this, but I chose this one because I prefer a dewy finish to my skin. I am like a normal to dry skin type, so I enjoy this. It is kind of mediocre, to be honest with you guys. It's not like the best primer. I don't think that it really extends the wear of my makeup too much, but it definitely does add an extra layer of moisture, which I can appreciate. So it is like this beige color. And once you blend it into the skin, you can definitely see that it leaves you with a nice glow. For foundation, I'm using the Photo Focus Foundation in Soft Beige. Now this is like a cult favorite product. I've heard so many YouTubers talk about it and I went out and purchased it because of that. Honestly, I love it a lot. It's a nice light to medium coverage and I feel like it's perfect for those no makeup makeup days if you want something that's really low fuss that you know is gonna work for you. The only bad thing I have to say is that it smells like paint thinner, unfortunately, but besides that, it looks really nice on the skin, natural finish, and you guys are about to see. This would also be perfect to apply if you are doing your makeup in a rush, if you have somewhere to be, because you can apply this generously and it won't look cakey. I am just blending this in with my L'Oreal sponge, and it's super quick and easy. I love watching people apply foundation. I don't know about you guys. It's like one of my favorite things to watch. So you can see it's not completely dewy and it's not completely matte. I think that's why so many people love this foundation. It's that perfect satin in between finish that can accommodate all types of skin. And then I have to mention another Wet n Wild foundation because it is one of my favorites. This is the Mega Cushion Foundation. It does have an SPF of 15. I have two shades here. This one is Light Ivory and this one is Nude Beige. Now I just kind of mix these two but it does come with an applicator inside. I don't tend to use it. I go in with my beauty sponge but if you're on the go that would be perfect and you can apply this on the go. I mean it is the perfect product for that. There is a mirror right Right inside the compact for you and it makes the skin look so dewy and gorgeous again very fresh and the finish just kind of evens out the skin does everything that you need it to do without it being super full coverage and one of the reasons that I love this is that it's perfect for touch-ups. So if you are wearing your foundation for a while and you find that it might be fading or cracking in some places, you can apply this on those areas and it will mask it in the most beautiful way. Like it doesn't make it look cakey at all. It just sort of blends away the spots that are 
kind of starting to break down. Now we're gonna go in with the Photo Focus Concealer in Light Ivory. And I'm going to put some right underneath the eyes as well as on some problem areas I have. But this is a pretty lightweight concealer. I feel like it could provide a little bit more coverage and it would be super ideal for me. It's got that basic doe foot applicator, which I do enjoy. I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't really judge concealers on how much they crease because every concealer creases on me. I have these fine lines that are kind of close to my lower lash line. It is going to happen regardless of what I do. The fine lines are there, product is going to fall into them. There's really no way to avoid it. So I wouldn't say that this is bad in that sense. It's just more of a light coverage concealer. If you have really intense blue or purple under eyes, it may not do the job for you. Before we go into set, I am going to use some cream face products. So one of my favorite Wet n Wild products of all time is the Mega Glow Dual Ended Contour Stick. This is in the shade Light Medium and it has the highlight on one end, which is kind of just like a matte cream highlight and then the contour on the other. So here are them swatched. I don't use the highlight side as much just because I do prefer something that is going to make my skin be noticeable from space. So personally, just not my vibe, but the contour is my jam. And I am going to just apply it right in those hollows of my cheeks, as well as a little bit on the forehead here. I'm not applying too much though, because I am gonna go in with a powder contour later on. I'm trying to show you guys as many products as possible. So I'm going to go in and blend with my EcoTools 360 Ultimate Pop Brush. This is seriously like the perfect brush for blending out contours like this because it's so densely packed. It's not going to move the product everywhere. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I love that this contour is nice and natural looking. You can build it up if you want it to be really intense or you can just leave it like this and people will never know. I'm also going to apply a liquid highlighter. This is the Mega Glow Hello Halo Liquid Highlighter in the shade Halo Goodbye. I love Wet n Wild and their puns, but this is a beautiful pinky champagne shade. Now this has a huge doe foot applicator and can dry down kind of quickly. So what I like to do is put some on the back of my hand and then dip my sponge onto my hand to pick up the product right at the tip there. And then I'm going to apply. Again, a really beautiful natural looking finish, but if you build it up, it will be blinding. Now I don't actually have one of their powders just because I used to have the pressed one, but I decluttered it. I don't use pressed powders all that often because of my drier skin. But in the contouring palette I have here, this one is in Dulce de Leche, they kind of have like a banana looking powder in there. I'm just gonna end up using that one because I lightly set my face, I don't pack on the powder. I'm going to work out the creases a little bit as much as I can first. And I'm just putting a very light layer. Obviously not an ideal powder for brightening the under eyes, but it'll do the job for setting. I'm gonna also use a fluffier brush to just set the forehead and my cheeks. Now I'm gonna go in with the contouring powder in here and kind of like a fluffier brush since we already do have that base contour on. And I am going to kind of lightly dust it on there. The only thing about a lot of the Wet n Wild powders is that there is a lot of kickback. Now, personally, I don't mind kickback as long as the products work. I would prefer them to be pigmented and blend smoothly because, you know, it's just a little bit of powder, but you can kind of see 
how much actually gets kicked up. Moving on to the Color Icon Pearlescent Pink Blush. Now, I normally don't go for pink shades with blush, but this one is really pretty. It kind of has a little bit of a coral undertone, so I actually like it, and I am going to pop that on with a blush brush. Now, this one is buildable, which I do prefer. I don't like when a blush is really intense upon the first application. It just makes it really hard to blend out and make it look natural, blend it in with the rest of the products. So I like that I can apply this a little bit at a time. And it just livens up the cheeks. Now this is kind of like an unnecessary step, but I am going to do it because I have it. This is the Color Icon Baked Blush in Don't Flutter Yourself. This was from the Flights of Fancy collection. They had come out a while ago, and this I like to use as a blush topper because on its own it's just a little bit too shiny, but applied over my blush, it looks really nice. I tried to figure out how to apply this correctly for the longest time because I just wasn't using the right brush. So I go in with one of these really fluffy dual fiber brushes and just tap it in there. That way the product is just getting on the tips of those bristles and then just tap it right on top of the blush. Now for more highlight because I just can't get enough glow. I am going to use the Mega Glow Loose Highlighting Powder in the shade Written in the Stars. Now this was one from their Zodiac collection. Wet n Wild's always coming out with new collections and products, so always something fun to try. But this I am using because it is the perfect pink champagne to match the liquid highlighter we put on underneath. I am going in with a fan brush because I don't really want to pack this on. I just want a light layer of it. A little bit goes a long way, as you might be able to tell. Honestly, this would last you forever because you don't need to use a lot and it comes with so much product. That's awesome. Now I've made it to the eyes. So I am going in with the Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. Now this reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay Primer Potion just because it is a similar sort of the shade and it blends out to just be transparent. It doesn't really provide any coverage for the lids, but it will make those shadows stick and stay true to color. So recently I have been setting down my eyeshadow primer. I know, again, an unnecessary step, but something that I just find helps to blend the other shadows a little bit more smoothly. So I go in with my Wet n Wild Single Shadow in Brulee, the perfect cream color that is not going to lay down too much pigmentation to the point where it will kind of ruin whatever look you're trying to do. It just, is perfect for this specific use. I find myself reaching for this so often. Actually, before I move any further with the shadows, I am going to do my brows, I almost forgot. I am using the Ultimate Brow Micro Brow Pencil. They actually came out with this pretty recently as well, and I am so glad that they did because I was waiting on them to release a product like this. The only other brow pencil that they had was one of those like triangular shaped ones that is a little bit thicker, and I definitely prefer something that's thin that can mimic those brow hairs. So it is my ideal setup for a brow pencil, which is the product on one end and then the spoolie on the other. So I can kind of brush through and make the brows look natural as I am filling them in. So the only downside to this product is that it can kind of be a little bit too creamy at times. So it may lay down a lot of product at once if you're not careful. I would definitely use a lighter hand with this, but on the bright side, you can fill in your brows nice and quickly since it is pigmented. The shade isn't even on this brow pencil, but as you can tell, my brows look a little bit intense. Again, you have to be very careful because it is easy to get carried away. And then once you've applied too much or too dark of a brow product, it's kind of hard to reverse it. So my advice is 
work little by little if you want to get this but honestly i do like the way it looks you just have to have time to apply it so now there's two of the 10 pan eyeshadow palettes that i really love i have not a basic peach this one is great for spring and summer because it has some of those more colorful tones and then this one is rosé in the air i think i'm going to be using this one today so it's kind of cool that they've labeled the top and bottom as transition shades just so you know if you're more of a beginner they also have suggested looks you can do on the back but I love that one is cool toned and then one is warm toned. So whatever kind of look you're going for, you can make it work within the same palette. That's kind of hard to find. Usually palettes are geared more towards one side or the other. I am going to go into this warmer transition shade at the bottom with a fluffy brush. And I'm just going to pop that right in my crease blending like normal and I am also going to bring some of that shade just down into that outer corner area just started raining outside so nothing new here in Florida so now that we've laid down that initial transition color I am going into this sort of brick red terracotta shade I'm actually using my wet n wild crease brush it's the only wet n wild brush that I own I'm not the biggest fan of it just because it's a little bit stiff I like something that's more fluffy, but if you really want to pack color in the crease, this will do it for you. Apparently you guys are getting some ASMR here on this channel too because the rain is now hitting the window and I'm sure you can hear it. Apologies in advance for this lighting. I know it's not the best. It started out great, but now that it's raining, it is a little bit dark, but at least you can still see what I'm doing. I've blended that shade into my crease. So now to match the weather outside, I'm gonna go in with a dark color for the lid, actually the darkest color in this palette, that brown shade there. You can see the kick up that I was talking about earlier with that shade I just used. So I'm actually gonna just take that shade on my finger and pack it onto the lid. Now I'm gonna go back in with that Wet n Wild blending brush and just blend the edge of that darkest shade we just used. And for the lower lash line, I'm gonna go in with a detail brush and that brick red we used in the crease. I'm just going to put it very close to my lash line. Keep in mind, if you don't tap off your brush, there will be a little bit of fallout. Then I'm gonna go over with a fluffier brush and the darkest color we used on the lid. And just work that along the outer area there. Smoke it out a bit. Honestly, I feel like these are some of the best shadows you can get at the drugstore. I mean, this is a look I would create with a high-end palette, so the fact that I am getting the same effect with this one says a lot about the quality. The rain just said, let me get more intense to ruin your video. For my inner corner and brow bone highlight, I'm using the lightest shade in this palette, that ivory color. Actually, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of the highlighter on the inner corner as well, just cause I want something a little more shimmery. For liner, I'm actually just gonna put the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlighter in my waterline. This is seriously the best pencil for brightening up that waterline. If you want your eyes to look bright and awake, if you're really tired, this will kind of help to mask it. I learned about this from Emily Noel here on YouTube. She is like the all-time makeup queen she knows so much and she is like the best at describing makeup how it wears how it works this is one of her recs and it is seriously incredible i feel like this is something that's going to constantly be in my collection no matter what now to curl my lashes this is not a wet n wild product now for the lower lashes, I'm going to use the Mega Length Mascara. This one is the waterproof version, which I have not tried yet. I've only tried the regular one, which I love, but I haven't seen the regular one in stores lately, so I don't know if they discontinued it. 
but I decided I would try this one. I love it because the wand is nice and thin, so I'm really able to get a good application on those lower lashes without getting mascara all over the place. Then for my top lashes, I am going to use the Wet n Wild Lash Renegade Mascara. This is in the shade Brazen Black, and this I think is just okay. Not one of my favorite products that Wet n Wild has. Not least, the lips. So I have the Perfect Pout Gel Lip Liner. This one is in Bear to Comment. I love this nude lip liner. The gel formula makes it super creamy and easy to glide on. However, that means that it will not last you throughout the day. I find that it does fade after a few hours, but it fades beautifully. So it just kind of leaves this tint on your lips. So see, it kind of looks like I applied a lipstick on its own, but that's just the lip liner. Now I do love this lipstick on top. It is 902C Bare It All, and it is one of my favorite nude lipstick shades ever of all time so it matches the lip liner really well you're not going to notice much of a color difference but look at that nude lip i love it it's stunning now i have to mention the lip product that i've been obsessed with recently it is the liquid catsuit high shine lipstick they came out with these earlier this year and this formula is incredible this one is in the shade send nudes i need to purchase way more i already have some of this on but my memory card was full so i don't know if you guys got to see it look at this it gives you shine it gives you color i wear it on its own i wear it over lip liner and the wand is perfect because it hugs your lips it's got this indent in it and it looks so good. It makes your lips look nice and juicy. So last but not least, we have setting spray. This is the natural finish setting spray. And I think this is just all right. I don't like this sprayer too much, so I'm gonna put it very far away. This one will make your makeup last a little bit throughout the day and kind of mesh the layers together but not quite as well as like a fix plus or my skin and navia setting spray so i don't find that i'm reaching for this too much but i find that it doesn't really change the finish of the skin so that is nice all right you guys so this is my full face of wet n wild i hope that you guys enjoyed i have to say I love so many of these products, the foundation, the cream contour, those lip products, the single shadow, the eyeshadow palettes, that ultimate brow highlight that I used in my waterline. I love these and so many of these products are actually like in my regular rotation. So I highly recommend you go get yourself some, especially if you are just starting out with makeup, it's the perfect way to start experimenting because it's affordable. And if you guys have any specific requests for me, please leave them in the comment section down below. But other than that, I hope you guys are having a great week and I will see you guys next time.